All right, so here today. Episode six, the Palhana Podcast. <laughs> episode six. Nailed episode it. Six. Nailed it. Yeah. Um, welcome, everyone, Palhana Podcast. We are here today to talk about a few hot topics. Um, let's just jump right in, huh? Let's, 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 yeah, let's, let's jump right in. I mean, we obviously upgraded the digs here. It's Yeah, we should talk about that. Um, I mean... Considering the quality of our last video was done on a mobile hotspot, <laughs> yeah. we uh, definitely stepping it up here. Definitely uh, appreciate Brandon Turner letting us uh, use the space. This is a quality production facility, and um, I think, uh, yeah, hopefully we can keep using this. This is way better than what we normally yeah. were using. Major upgrade. Yeah. How's, how's summer going? Uh, summer's great, man. Uh, we've been in the trenches a bit. Wife's out of town right now. Uh, in Switzerland, hiking oh. the uh, Ingadine Trail. Is that the and, Alps there? Uh, that's the Alps. The Alps, Swiss Alps, to yes. be exact. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we've been uh, doing deals, grinding, and keeping the kids alive. Yeah. So you taking care of two kids <laughs> for an extended period of time must be yeah fantastic. Yeah, we got the two kids. Um, you know, thankfully we got summer school going, so able to get some work done during the day, but. Then it's uh, we're in the trenches, bud. Morning and evening, so she gets back Friday. But who's counting? Who's okay. counting down? Nobody. No one's okay. no one's paying attention. Um, hot topics. Let's do it. Probably the biggest one right now is everyone's talking about um, is this bill that was proposed. I know we talked about it on our last episode um, to convert all apartment zoned short term rentals to long-term rental only. Um, so we, I think the last time we chatted about it, what it, the meeting, we were waiting for the meeting. Yeah, it was before the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that meeting happened late June. Yep. Um, and then there was supposed to be a follow-up meeting last Tuesday, July 9th, which was canceled last minute due to them not having quorum. Couldn't make a quorum. Uh, they couldn't make quorum, uh, which seems fishy to me. I don't know. <laughs> so the, the this, to kind of circle back, this is planning commission meeting. This is the first step in the review process of any bill. Um, these are a group of volunteer um, volunteers that create, you know, make up this board. And they basically, you know, advise on how to proceed on the legislation, right? Um, so they give with like a, the, guidance I, from the planning director, who the planning director is uh, is appointed, appointed by the mayor. So they take testimony and then give a recommendation, pretty yeah. much, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's sort of the process, right? They they're required to accept public testimony, yep. um, and then they make a decision. Um, but let's wind it back to what two weeks prior um, that meeting. A lot of people were in attendance. We had a lot of our clients, friends on there. Um, you know, it was a big turnout. And what do we see, Sloan? What do we, what do we see at that meeting? I mean, overall, the kind of what the county brought forward through uh, Mr. Higa um, was... Sterling that, Higa, yeah. yeah let, we'll, uh, was, we'll circle back to him. We'll circle back to him. How do we feel about that? Well, the, the general consensus from the people seemed to question whether or not proper economic studies had been done to what exactly the impact was going to be on Kihei and West Maui. Yeah. If you remove um, such a large number of short-term rentals, what it's going to do to the economy long-term. And there, there didn't seem to be very much evidence of that presented by the county at all. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, it, it seemed like the presentation they gave. So basically they opened the meeting, the mayor spoke, uh, Bisson, he gave some, some words. Um, and you know, it was interesting. The tone of his speech, I thought, yeah. um, definitely, you know, he sees this bill going through as written currently, uh, it seemed. And, um, you know, the economic evaluation by Sterling Higa seemed uh, a bit contradictory to some of the other studies that have been done, um, most notably Paul Brubaker's that was done about a 
two years ago, a year and a half ago, kind of analyzing if we were to do this, what the impact would be. Yeah. Um, Cause there is, I mean, there was, there was precedent in Oahu, right? There, there yeah. was something very similar that happened over yeah. there. Yeah. So it's easy to yeah. kind of compare. Right. Um, sure. And I mean, there's no doubt that we need housing. I think we all agree there. Yeah, absolutely. We've, you know, our, our local government has screwed up for way too long and hasn't put the proper mechanisms in place to make sure that affordable housing is being built. Yep. Um, this comes through working, you know, working with developers, tax incentives, requiring, you know, percentage of these projects to be affordable as they're built. But we're so behind the eight ball now. Now we're just scrambling to try and catch up, right? Yeah, get anything um, built that we can. And it's just, you know, so you know. I thought Sterling's analysis saying that, you know, there's going to be minimal negative impact from taking away 7,000 short-term rental condos, basically 7,000 units that your typical Maui traveler could stay in. Right. Um, how would that not affect our economy? It Short answer is it will. <laughs> it's going to. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, there, there's no other way that it, that it could not. Right. It's just you take away that amount of people spending their money yeah. in the local. Like, just look at Kihei specifically and, you know, all those small businesses that are going to be affected, you, you just can't. There's no way you can't take those into account yeah. of what, what it's going to do to, to Kihei or, or even, you know, West Maui too. It's just... And not to mention, the people that stay in these condos are really the majority of the people that are spending money at our local businesses. Right. All our small mom, you know, smaller yeah, yeah, mom yeah. and pops. That's right. Um, your typical hotel resort vacationer, and this is plain common knowledge, I would think, but yeah, they yeah. oftentimes will be spending money in the within the resort eating at their restaurants, shopping at their shops. Yep, at a higher clip for sure. At definitely at a higher clip. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they still get out, right? right? But but these condo travelers are the ones that are, you know, everything they're doing is out in the community, typically. Um, so, yeah, interesting analysis, no doubt about it. Um, well, so the, we started the meeting with that. Well, so the mayor, this he could use this as, if he were to get this bill passed, it would instantly become his legacy, right? Yeah. It would, it would instantly you know, catapult him into to some sort of, of status within the community here, whether, yep. you know, long term that's going to be good or bad, negative or positive on, on you know, the island as a whole, it's yet to be seen. But yep. that w- it is a legacy type of, of thing for him. And I think for that sure. that's, for sure. you know, has to be some sort of motivating factor for him. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely politically motivated. Um, and I, I think his intentions are in the right place. Yeah. You know, everyone wants more housing. We need it. Um, and I think, you know, it, well, let's jump into kind of some of the testimony we yeah. heard. Um, I think there was definitely strong showing on both sides of, you know, depending on how you feel about this, um, you know, um, definitely the La- Lahaina Strong crew showed up in full force and gave strong testimony. Um, a lot of opponents to this bill showed up and yeah. that testimony is still continuing. That's what this meeting last Tuesday was supposed to be. Um, they have not rescheduled a date for the next one, so we don't know when that testimony is going to happen. But still, a lot of testimony to be heard. Um, but what do, what do we hear out there? Uh, we, I mean, we heard from a lot of you know people that either own vacation rentals that are going to be affected by the bill. They work, they own management companies or cleaning companies or you know other small business owners that you know came forward and you know, we're vulnerable in front of the microphone and in front of everyone who was watching it. It was, it was pretty powerful stuff and, you know, from both sides. And, um, yeah, I just really don't think that the County's taken into effect the the impact it's going to have on, on the local economies. It's just, they, they, they provided no data or minimal data and it just didn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. It just, yeah, I noticed at, at, a bit of a theme, um, and I know this is a touchy subject, but yeah. I did, you know, it seemed that the testimony in favor of the bill was very emotionally charged, reasonable, absolutely understandable. Right. Um, but I I don't think I heard one testimony that was how this bill is actually going to provide housing, affordable housing. Right. For, that's, for that's local the key. That's families. The key, right, yeah. How is it going to do that? Not one person said that. Yeah. And you can hold me to that. You could go back through all of it. Um, 
No one said that. Right. I think there is extensive testimony on how this bill will potentially negatively impact a lot of things. All the while, not actually providing affordable housing for local people. Um, and I think that's our biggest issue with this, right? Exactly. It's not like you're for the bill or against the bill. I think it's, will this bill actually create housing? And that's where we don't think it really will. Um, this broad sweep of all these expensive to operate complexes, how are we going to make these either affordably rentable or affordably buy purchasable given all the costs associated with them. Um, just doesn't make sense. Are there certain buildings out there that it does make sense? Of course. Absolutely. Like th there's, there's several that, that were mentioned in some of the testimony that were originally workforce housing. Yeah. But there's very few. Yeah. It's not, it's not many. Specifically right. in right. Kihei, there's not very many. Right. I know West Maui, Hona Kauai, and, and yeah, yeah, there, there's, there is, there's but. a handful for sure. Um, and I think that's where we, you know, you and I have talked about it. I think that's where we want to see it go. I know. Is let's put together an analysis of which of these properties is feasible for some sort of affordability. Let's look at them. Let's analyze all the ones on that Minotoya list. Yep. Let's take the ones that, you know, are feasible in all aspects for, you know, operating costs, size, uh, storage, parking, amenities, location, everything, right? Let's take it all into, all into account. Let's find which ones make sense. And then let's carve those out and make those, um, you know, make those long-term rentable. Yep. I think that's the way this should go. I think a lot of people are in that boat. Um, but to kind of think that you're going to convert these condos in Wailea or Ka Kapalua or... Oh, no. Kapalua is crazy, too. You know, yeah. like, it's just, it doesn't... Let's use some logic here, you know? Well, it doesn't it make could, sense. It could be something where that this is, you know, the starting point for the county and what they what they want. That's what we hope, right? That's, that's kind of... And find the middle ground and yeah. a carve-out, kind of like you said, that, that makes sense economically and, and go down that road. Because, I mean, yeah. I, we, we've said it all the time, affordable housing is... Everyone wants it. I don't yeah. think there's anyone around here that, that couldn't, you wouldn't say wants more housing for right. people that are from here, or live here, or need to work here, right. and those types of things. It's just, yeah, the, the way that the, the path that's currently going down just doesn't seem yeah. feasible. And I think it needs to be mentioned that, you know, obviously everyone's always hyper-focused on their market. This is probably one of the most pressing issues I mean, not only nationwide, worldwide, worldwide 100%. right now, especially yeah. oh, it's yeah. like it's happening right now. You look at any desirable place to live in the country and there are affordable housing issues and they're trying to figure out, they're trying to solve these problems. Yep. It's just this phase, you know, it's always been a problem a lot of these places, but it's really gotten worse with the high inflation and, um, you know, cost of living is so high now. Um, so this is, you know, definitely one of the most pressing issues we see. And and um, I think it should be noted, I, I don't have the guy's name, but the mayor just appointed a new housing director, like, last week. I'm pretty encouraged by the guy. Yeah. Um, I apologize for not having his name. But so the housing department in Maui County used to be, or it was, like, housing and human concerns, right? It was kind of a combined yeah. department. So they split it off. And they have a housing director now. His whole role is just to figure out solutions for affordable housing. That's great. It's literally his whole job. Yeah. Um, and the Civil Beat did a good article on the guy. Um, grew up in public housing. Had you know a very kind of rough early childhood. Um, you know, and kind of evolved going to some pretty top notch schools. Ended up going to Yale for law school. Oh, wow. Um, has a background in architecture, um, urban development, uh, sociology. He's, uh, he's, he seems like a very qualified fit. Um, and he's actually kind of supposed to be like post-career at this point and like semi-retired. Yeah. And he took this role just because he sees the need and yeah. he wants to, you know, try and make something happen. Wants to serve. Yeah. So it, se it seems like that we we finally have someone in there who can kind of push some of these things forward, which uh, I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. Sounds you know? like the guy for the job. Yeah. Wants to do it, has good experience doing yeah. it, and well-educated. And, 
And the most frustrating thing in the article they mentioned, like, you know, he kind of analyzed some potential projects that could have happened in the past or potential funding assistance from federal, state, whatever. And, like, it's the, the county just completely dropped the ball on this stuff. He looked at it, and he's like, it looks like there's a lot of these opportunities that we could have had that we just never took advantage of. Right. It's like, well, you know, I mean, not surprising, but <laughs> wild. <laughs> I know. You know? Um, so, yeah, definitely probably the hottest of topics right now going, you know, buzzing around Maui. Um, well, it's, it's affected kind of the, the market quite a bit. Yeah. We've seen it's, you know, currently yeah. we just – Inventory and, and pending sales and, and all those things. This this the Minotoya thing has really you know kind of left its mark on on where the market is right now at at current. Yeah, yeah. I think um, we're seeing there's a lot of confusion. You know, we people who aren't here. You know, they're on the mainland, maybe shop it, looking for you know whatever, whatever uh, investment properties or you know, vacation rentals, et cetera. A lot of them think that Maui's planning on just banning all short-term rentals, yeah, yeah, just yeah. full sweep. Um, so we've been talking with our clients, letting them know what actually is proposed and what, what's going on. Um, obviously, in these apartment zone complexes, what what are we seeing there right now activity-wise? Just tons of inventory, not much not much action. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be a lot of pending sales in that segment at all. And, you know, it's just – people kind of waiting it out to see what happens with yeah. the bill. And um, there are some, I do have a couple of clients that are, that are okay with taking the risk of, of buying in certain complexes, but they're really yeah. specific on where and, and yeah, you know, the type of unit that it is. And yeah. Um, yeah. not a lot of buyers for those apartment zone condos right now. No. <laughs> if you're trying to sell one of those right now, um, it's tough. We've been having a lot of, a lot of conversations with our clients on what to do there. Um, I think best advice right now, sit tight, wait and see. Definitely a wait and see kind of phase. Um, you know, it's not the time to try and fire sell or, you know, I mean, there's just, there's no buyers looking in those complexes right now. Uh, you know, very, or there are a couple, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It has to be at the right price and all that. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. We, we could, what, what are we seeing elsewhere in the market? I mean, stuff's moving in other other segments. Yeah. I would say for sure. Um, specifically, that you know, the lower end, but you know, between under a million to about yeah. one two one three, that that market is really really active right now. Yeah. Um, I guess that it just. What's our uh, pop quiz loan? Uh, What's our median home price as of June twenty twenty four? One point three two. 1.3 or the 1.3? Close, yeah, yeah. close. That's close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, price is right rules, yeah. I lose. Yeah. But <laughs> Pat's picks rules, I win. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> close. Uh, yeah, we're at 1.3 now. Um, things are, yeah, probably a good time to bring up the stats. We were just trying to go off the cuff there, but numbers, a lot of numbers. Um, so what are we seeing? What are we seeing? We're seeing inventory creeping up. Creeping up. That's a good thing. It is. Um, I think everyone across the board li likes that. I've noticed a lot of people who have been searching for homes, um, starting to see way more options available. Um, pricing has not been affected yet. Nope. Pricing still creeping up. Um, but you think, much... you think that's going to you think that's going to change? I think we're kind of in that phase right now. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't know how long that's going to last. I think, you know, we had some real encouraging CPI data last week. Uh, and mortgage rates fell a quarter of a point in the last seven days. Yep. So we're hovering six eight six eight five now for loan, which first time we've seen the sixes in a while. In a while, yeah. Um, so I think as that creeps down, uh, potentially some political changes, I think the market's going to ramp back up, to be honest. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the interest rates are double-edged sword, right? The, yeah. the the lower they go, it's just going to create more buyers and drive the prices back up. Yeah. And so people that are, are waiting on the sideline for interest rates to go down, I'm just not sure that's the best strategy. Yeah, you're going to be with the masses, exactly. for sure. If, if there's um, something that you want to buy and you know that's where you want to be, it's, you know... Yeah. It's it's not a terrible there's, time. There's been, you know, there's definitely opportunities. Yeah. I mean, we clients are still buying. Um, and, you know, 
they're finding that on the buy side, you definitely have a little more leverage you do. right now. You, do. you could come in low, you can negotiate, you can get the terms you want. Um, get, a, get a credit yeah. for, for a rate buy down. Yeah, yeah. Right? people are all, offering credits. All, all sorts um, of, of creative ways to do it. So there's definitely some you know advantages to be sh- being shopping right now, but yeah. I, I think we're in that window. I don't, you know, obviously we can look back at this in six months and see if we were right or wrong, but... I think we're kind of in that soft window where prices are pretty flat, especially in condos. Oh, condos, it's – you I mean, actually – yeah. Condo yeah. inventory right now is up 46% year over year, almost 50% year over year. A lot of condos out there. Uh, pendings are down 20% yep. for condos, so less activity, clearly. Pendings on homes are flat year over year, so yep. we're seeing – about the activity we saw last year, but more homes on the market. Yeah, there is more, more new listings. So same, same kind of pace of sales, but more listings for a buyer. It's not a bad position to be in. Yeah. Um, let's jump into a new segment, Salon. Hot or not. Hot or not. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, came up with this on the drive down here, so forgive us if it's... Not quite what we had hoped for, but it'll, it'll, we'll, we'll get it there. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get, get there. there. So we're going to talk about different segments of the market right now, and this is kind of a great time to do this. We've got real pockety market. Yeah. Um, certain segments are hot, and some segments are not. So we're going to quiz Sloan here. We're going to really test test his market knowledge. Um, Sloan, if I'm looking for home under one point one. Is that market hot or not right now? That market is very hot. Very Fire. hot. Very hot. Fire. Um, it's, we're seeing multiple offers. And yeah. We've got a case study. We do have a case Sloan study. Just, 20, we just had one. 20, 20, 27 Alania Place. Um, listed it for 975. Got 10 offers. And um, we're we're deep into escrow now. Um, yeah, well over list price. So it was, it was a good strategy. At the time, I, I was a little, you know. I was stoked on it, but oh yeah, um, but yeah, that 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 under one one, especially in Kia, it's just it's crazy. Even yeah. in town, I mean, well yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, Kia has been very busy. White Luku has almost been busier. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously you got all the new development stuff, Kehilani. Yep, a um, lot of interest in Anuhea. Yeah, um, so yeah, that segment definitely hot. What if I'm looking to buy a house in Wailea? Under four million right uh, now. The under four million Wailea market is not hot right now. Um, you're just seeing chilly. In, it's a bit chilly. You're seeing inventory chilly. just days on market is you know well over 100, 150 days, and you're even seeing listings cancel. And, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the more interesting aspects of what our market is currently. I, I wouldn't really expect that that entry level Wailea price point to be so cool yeah yeah and well when on the contrary white lay higher end homes you know let's call them five million and up yep what are those doing they're moving they're moving you're seeing them move they're moving yeah you're the seeing, higher end you're higher end is still golf of states still moving yeah quite quite a bit of activity golf, um golf vistas those are moving yeah, yeah yep. it's, it's it's really interesting it's yep yep, yep. Wh- why do you think that is um Unfortunately, it's because the people with money right now have money. And the mark... <laughs> Is that the haves or have nots? It's <laughs> yeah, the, the it's age old, like, yeah. It's tough. Um, it's, I mean, the market, you look at the equity markets year to date. Yeah. We're up like 30%. It's Way crazy. Yeah. Um, so I think people who are invested, people who have cash, people who are liquid are sitting okay right now. Um and cash is king right now, as we all know. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, finance costs have taken a lot of finance buyers out. You know, cash, you're able to get the terms you want. You're able to, you know, kind of dictate the transaction right now. And um, definitely that's what we're seeing, especially on the higher end. Yeah. Especially on the higher end. What about um, res condos right now? Let's say res condos, so not vacation rental. Um South Maui, you know, I mean, there's nothing in the ultra, ultra high end, but like, you well, know, kinda. in the, like, yeah, I mean, well, let's say under five mil, right? So basically all the kind of South Maui res condos. Yeah. 
Are we hot or not right now? Um, not. <laughs> I thought you were going hot there. I know you did. I know. Did. This is tough. This is a tough one right now. Well, so, this is a tough so, question. So, so new inventory, obviously, lo- anything in Lailoa. And, and if we're talking Wailea, Lailoa is going to go, okay? But yeah. if we're that entry level Wailea point, those are sitting. That's yeah. just under five, right? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Kaimalas are moving pretty good. Um, what else we got? Kind of, kind of. We got, we got two new Kaimalu listings. Yeah. We're getting showings, but That's no good. offers yet. No offers you yet. You just put it on, though, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Papali, moved, that, that one moved pretty quick. Yeah, this year. Yep, Papali. That's upper end though. That's that's definitely upper end of the range. Is that over five? No, it was under five, but yeah, right there at it. Yeah, yeah, fours. Yeah. Um, palms. Palms. Well, yeah, palms. What's going on in the palms? Not, nothing. Not. Nothing. We just, we just took one off. Didn't nothing's we? going yeah. on in the palms. Um, what else we got? Keala. Keala's had a not, couple sitting. We're going not. I'm going not. I'm yeah. sticking. I'm sticking it with my not, answer. But it, like, if you would have asked us this month, two months ago. Hot. Yeah. It's like it's it's just kind of shifted a little bit. Um, so interesting dynamic there. We'll see. Maybe just a little cool point. Um, I, I got one for you. I got one for you. Okay. 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 What we got? Uh, Fire up, away. Upcountry, single family homes under $2 million. Definitely hot. Definitely. Definitely hot. Yeah, that was late. If I, you're, if I, you're I, didn't going, I didn't give you an easy one. I, I thought you were going to go high end upcountry. Yeah. Different story, oh, oh, though. Oh, that's not. That's no, a big not. It was hot. It was. But it is not. Not. <laughs> it is inventory on the let's call it over three mil. Oh, you know, up country, Haiku, Makwa Kula, yep. especially Kula. We uh it was definitely it was a hot market, hot real estate market. And I think what happened is prices in Kula just shot up pretty quick and, and it's it kinda needed a- outpaced needed it. to stabilize a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um but yeah, under two million if you're looking up country north shore. Hot market. I know. Hot. Especially with a hot. Hot. any sort of, oh, of yeah. accessory dwelling at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I mean, I would say even like up to mid twos. I just had clients we represented um, two and a half in Haiku. Oh, yeah. Down to our face. That's Waylo, yeah. You know, Waylo. Yeah, it's just great. typically a more fringe market, but there is three buyers circling this thing like there was blood in the water. Wow. We had, you know, we had to do escalation clauses, and at the end of the day, we did secure the property for our clients. But it was a battle. Um, so yeah, I think that segment's still real strong. Um, what about vacation rentals? If I'm looking to buy a vacation rental right now, not just apartment zone ones, yeah, yeah. but any zoning, what are we seeing there? I'm saying not. I, I'm, I'm going to say not. I, I think that, that overall, that um, with kind of what the, the rental numbers are indicating it's just it doesn't seem like like the market is as strong as it was say oh, yeah. even last year oh yeah and you know tourism's down a little bit um, quite a bit actually this summer and yeah. um, I definitely think that um, yeah there needs to be a little adjustment a little adjustment yeah. I think in the pricing for sure yeah. for sure um, and That's I think what, those are those might be achievable the asking prices are not adjusted right. but I think people can come in low yeah and pick up something at a reasonable value given the adjusted valuation, right? Yep. I mean, we know we have such close ties to the management side. We know nightly rates right now are probably down 15%-ish yep. year over year. So that's got to factor into your revenue and then value. Turn, and turn your price. That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but I, I think you're right. Definitely a short-term rental market is pretty chilly, pretty Not. chilly right now. Um and I'm kind of surprised at that on the hotel zone ones. I, I would think that that we would see a lot more activity in those yeah. right now too. And it's but maybe this just... is maybe we're in this period where people haven't really caught on yet. Yeah, and that's what's coming because I think people are still confused. Everyone thinks that they're There's getting rid no of all more, short-term, no rentals short-term rentals on the entire yeah, island of Maui, yeah. but once people kind of narrow in and figure out that like these hotel zone ones are unchangeable unaffected they're protected, they are protected yeah. in that zoning class so they're going to be vacation rentals for eternity um once people kind of catch on to that i think those are going to start seeing a lot more interest and and we're going to see you know deals happening i, th- I mean I, I still think that it's right now is a great time to go if you're yeah. looking for a vacation rental yeah. just go find one of those hotel zone ones and yeah. yeah find one that works for Pick you it up at a, at a good number and yeah i agree i agree um 
Well, that concludes our first uh, hot or not. That was a good round. hot or not. That was pretty that good. Was, that was pretty good. good. That was a good hot we or had not. some good segments. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, that helped you guys get a better feel for what's happening. Um, what else we got here, Sloan? We got anything? Not really. Kind of winding down here. Um, the Open. Who who you like in, in the Open Championship over at? Uh, yeah, I think got, it's Royal uh, Troon. Uh, Royal Troon. Yeah. Yep. AKA British Open. Yeah. But uh, and now we're just we cut that out. Why, just the why Open. Did, why did they do that? I don't even understand. It's British. Can't say that. I guess you can't call it British. Is that a bit political? Uh, I guess so. They yeah. Brexit. No yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Open. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Rory, I mean... Yeah, obviously, you know, everyone's going to be looking at Rory. Um, he looks pretty good. He was in good form. Yeah, he played good. He was good. in good form last week. Uh, Bob McIntyre won what the was Scottish that? Open. Yeah, it was a Scottish Open. Scottish That's what Open. it was. Yeah, He's yeah, yeah. Scottish, won the Scottish Open. It's the first yeah. time in a long yeah. time a Scott has won the, yeah, their, their national big. championship. That was yeah. big. I love it. I was honestly my most psyched thing about the whole tournament was when nance said great scott <laughs> when he drained the putt yeah you always gotta nance always has the call he, <laughs> he's always got a great one dude the line was just so clutch but that was a sick one he drained like a 20 footer plus for yep. to freaking take it for the dub <sighs> yeah wild but yeah we got the open coming up um yeah, it's kind of the dog days of sports uh, who, i haven't honest, followed it's... i haven't followed uh did, how's bryson looking bryson uh his team got second uh, last week at Liv. Liv, yeah. They yeah. were in Ad- not Adelaide. They were in uh, Valderrama in Spain, and Honorbon Lahiri had a literally a two footer to win the thing and yeah. to win Bryce. Oh, I saw that. The thing. I and saw he, that. He lifted he freaking, out. He freaking yanked the putt. It was, he dead it was, pulled it and missed a two footer. That was worse loses. than Rory's. Yes. I, it was way worse. <laughs> it was way worse. And then he <laughs> loses to Sergio in the playoff. And yeah. So Sergio's yeah. team beats Bryson's team. Oh wow. Wow. And then that morning, Alcaraz wins Wimbledon for Spain. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then Spain wins the Euros. Yeah, on the same day, dude. Spain is hyped, hyped, hyped. Let's wow. go. We should go Barcelona. Yeah, Barcelona, dude. I've been there. <laughs> been there. You? Yeah, that was like twenty years ago. But the architecture. We were raging. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, Cat- is it Basque? It's Basque. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I think it it's is. Basque. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Pretty wild. Nice. Fun place. Um. All right. Well, that's it. Episode six. That's a wrap. We'll wrap it up. Um, please hit us up with any questions. Hopefully you found just a little smidgen of value here somewhere. Well, and we'll, uh, we'll circle back with you soon. Sounds good. All right, Pat.